1915, Robert Frost brought his wife and four children to a small farm in the White Mountains of New Hampshire. He was a terrible farmer. He used to milk the cows at midnight so he could sleep late. His neighbors in nearby Franconia, New Hampshire, figured he'd be on the town's welfare rolls by Christmas. A lot of folks wondered what old Bob was doing when he lived out here. He wasn't real famous yet. People saw him leaning back barefoot looking at the clouds, or swinging on trees, or stopping in their woods. His little horse thought he was nuts. He never could decide which road to take. One day, they heard Robert Frost read something he had written. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep, and miles to go before I sleep, and miles to go before I sleep. It was here in Franconia that Robert Frost would become America's best known poet. Much has changed since then, but folks in Franconia never forgot Robert Frost. His old homestead came up for sale a few years back, and the town, all 760 of the people who live here, bought it, taxed themselves a bundle to get it. Every man, woman, child, and probably some of the dogs, 25 bucks a person. The people figured if the place worked for Frost, it could work for others. Each year, for eight years, they have paid poets to live in the old home. We wanted it to go on serving poetry, not just to sit there as a dusty museum, but to be alive with living people in it, writing poetry. It is no museum. Ben Santos learned to walk here. His father, Rod Santos, is the poet this year and what's there to stop us but our natures. The town picks poets who are still young, but already recognized as near the stage in their careers as Frost was at the time he lived here. They get the home rent-free with a salary and only an occasional visitor. There was someone who came through and had looked through the house and had gone on the walk and walked outside and was standing on the porch and said, that Jack Frost could sure write some good poems, couldn't he? <laughs> Writing is memory, not moment. It takes time for the senses to sort out what is seen. Yeah. Lynn Santos has a PhD in English and is also a published poet. What effect has living in Robert Frost's place had on your poetry? To look at things the way they looked at them frees you in a strange sort of way because then you begin to see where you're different. Yeah. I'm more interested in the domestic landscape. You want to take a bath? What it means to be a family, what it means to be a mother, what it means to be a wife. When we sit in that kitchen drinking our coffee, we hey, can see Eleanor at the stove telling Robert to get to work, yeah. goading him to write another poem. Yeah. And I think uh, maybe that presence is still there doing that to us. Okay. Poetry is seldom written looking out. It is written, looking in. Words rarely come eye to hand. They must be filtered through emotion. Robert Frost said, a poem begins with a lump in the throat. One little poem before you go night-night, okay? This one's about you. All the little ones I never had keep vigil with me, drawstrings tucked. Now they want their starlight their glasses of milk, their story. Franconia could have built a basketball court or a new bridge with its tax money. It did not. It wrote a poem without a pen. For today, Bob Dotson, NBC News, at Robert Frost's house in Franconia, New Hampshire. <laughs>